curve strap hair strands. In this clip, we're going to create some hair strands using the curve strap brush. I'm just going to go ahead and click into our brush menu here and select the curve strap snap brush. And I'm just going to draw along our hair model here. Next, inside of the stroke menu, I'm going to locate the curve not curve functions, but the curve modifiers. Turn on size and click on the graph here. I'm just going to edit it by pulling on the points here, just leveling it out. And then I'm going to click on the stroke here to update it. Now let's click to add a point, pull it off the graph and back on to make it a hard edge. And you can see we have a bulge in the center there. If we pull down the size like so, we'll taper them. So just click to update. And now we created a custom curve strap snap brush. Let's just undo that. And now using our hair model here, let's clear that mask. As a template, we're just going to draw out the curve like so. I'm just going to increase my brush size a bit, then click the stroke to update. And I think that's pretty darn close. Let's go ahead and commit that. All right. Looks good. Now, as you see, we're going to go ahead and continue this up the hair model here for just a bit. I just went ahead and hid the previous strand. And it helps so you don't interact with it because the strap brush will snap to the surface and I don't want it to snap to a previous strand there and you can see we can quickly kinda get in some hair strands this way just clear my mask here let's go ahead and stroke this one out like so and perform a few tweaks here and it's pretty close. It's one of those things where we want to get as close as possible and then come back for edits is the goal here. As with most of the geometry we added to our character here. I'm just checking this angle here to see if I want to edit any more. Just go ahead and draw out another stroke here for that strap. Increase my brush size. All right. And commit. Just clicking on the model to commit it. And we're going to draw another one here. And go ahead and increase the brush size. Looks good. I'm going to go inside the stroke menu and move the bulge over a little bit. And that way we can get a better placement and lining up with our reference here. So it's another way to customize this brush to your hair strand needs here. You can also edit the tapers on each end. It might be a little trial and error to find out which side is which, but lots of power there. Let's continue to move around and find my next target here. I'm gonna draw another strand. Nice chunky strand here. Go ahead and increase my brush size. Go into the stroke and nudge my center bulge around as well as taper one of my ends a bit more. And that's pretty good. Pretty good. Let's continue to pull. See if we can get this to line up even more. All right, that's looking good. And I got to remind myself not to shoot for perfection, but something that's good enough to tweak into position. Now, now we got that done. I'm just going to isolate the hair model and split off the strands into their own sub tool. Now that we have that, my next goal here is to get some poly groups for each side of these strands. So I'm just going to go to the poly groups menu here, expand that. 
and into the group by normals. I'm just going to click it on default settings. And now we have polygroups for each side of each strand. I'm just going to subdivide a few times here. The first subdivision has smooth turned off. And with the open circle, polish by features a few times till we get some nice tight edges there. See how these look. Looking pretty tight. Now let's go ahead and use our move topological brush to nudge things into better alignment and position as well as better overlapping. So I'm just using that move topological brush just to get these strands to sit just right. Just moving the camera around, which is essential using your move brush to find the right angle to pull in the direction you're going in. Just nudging this edge in here. And it's good to use nice and relatively broad brushes wherever possible to avoid making too many small movements that can be hard to fix even with the use of polish by features so just keep your brush as broad as possible when nudging i'm just pulling this edge here all right just continue to work our way up this strand I'm just going to pull this piece up and out all the way up as well as fill in any gaps on both sides of this strap here or hair strand I should say and we could tuck it behind a strand but I think I'm just going to continue to fill this gap here with this strand just need to pull it up towards the surface a bit more like so and just continue to edit all right now on this strand i just mask off all but this one poly group just so i can pull the face out a bit more kind of giving a bit more depth to that I'm just pulling it over just accentuating our bevel a little bit all right it looks better now let's go ahead and clear my mask and zoom out see how things are looking let's go ahead and continue to nudge our way to success here Nudging is like half of uh, 3D sculpting, in my opinion. I do a lot of nudging. It's also a lot of the fun stuff is. You take something that's kind of mediocre and raw, and you can truly nudge it into something uh, more or less exceptional if you just continue to nudge so just continue to pull on these strands here and let's see what we have here I'm going to add some thickness to this particular strand here so I just masked off the back side poly group here and I'm just trying to find the right angle now with everything visible to pull out that back side just making the strand a bit thicker and then I'm going to scale in a little bit not that anyone will see it all right got that scale in just a little bit push back and go ahead see how that looks okay that helped me out so rotate around our model let's find another strand to nudge on here 
All right, just pull this out on this side. We need to work on this one a bit more to fill in the gaps. All right. Let's go ahead into our subtool palette and turn off the petals so we can manipulate these strands a bit better in the back here. Let's continue to tweak. And I think you kind of get the gist at this point. Just pull and push. Mm -hmm. And this is just another method to creating some hair strands here with the curve strap snap brush. And in the next clip, we will cover yet another method. Just going to go ahead and mask off this poly group or strand and use pinch to taper the edge. But you also have to be careful when you use pinch because it pinches in every direction so it truly creates a point even if I wanted it in two directions or one direction so be aware of that just pulling on the edges here and I decided to just tuck that one behind that the strand there but that does conclude this clip I'll see you in the next